Hi guys, happy new year and uh, I hope that this is a year of revival where we'll get rid of the pandemic and the lockdowns. So hopefully that is what we all we are all looking forward to. Now coming to the topic at hand, um, based on the popular demand, based on lots of requests. So what I've decided to cover now is the throughput troubleshooting. And uh, if I look at it fr uh, from uh, the perspective of uh, from the practical perspective, I can think about three major categories when it comes to throughput troubleshooting and optimization. The first one can be drive test analysis, where you get drive test logs and you need to root cause and find out uh, your throughput bottlenecks. The second one can be KPI optimization. So uh, in the second session, this is, so this will be the first session. Uh, in the second session, we'll talk about uh, how to root cause throughput bottlenecks or throughput issues using KPI analysis. And in the third one, uh, I will cover uh, Wireshark analysis to find out uh, application level throughput issues and to root cause, let's say, issues like um, we said web page download time, uh, time to content and those issues. So uh, stay tuned for all of that. For today, let's focus on drive test analysis. So, so what we will go through is that we will uh, see different topics that we can, uh, different issues that we can root cause using drive test log files. Uh, first one we are simple we talk about radio issues which are coverage and interference issues then we will see how we can find out congestion or capacity issues from uh, drive test logs and in the last we'll talk about how we can estimate whether uh, your throughput problem is actually a ran issue or it is a transport backhaul or core issue uh, all of that only using the uh, uh, drive test log files. So uh, let's start. Uh, the first one, which is let's say a coverage or a radio issue, that's uh, that's pretty simple. Uh, if you look at any log file, uh, but it will show you if you have throughput on the y axis and you put the coverage, let's say RSRP, which is used for both LTE and uh, 5G, if you put that on the x axis, you will see that as the user's RSRP goes down, that means user goes in bad coverage, the throughput will keep going down. So that's a normal uh, chart. That's uh, the that's what we expect that a user which is near the site should get better throughput, while the user which is far away or let's say behind um, wall or uh, in deep indoor, it will have a lower RSRP and it will get a lower throughput. So that's pretty simple. Uh, what you if you so if you have a drive test log file and you have facing low throughput issues, the first thing to verify is that uh, what is your RSRP where you are facing the low throughput issues. So if your RSRP is also low, that indicates that your problem is a typical coverage problem. And for that one, what you can do is that you can either up tilt your cell to increase your coverage, or you can increase the power of your cell that can also increase your coverage or if it, both of the, these things are not possible you can see if you if it's feasible that you can add one more site or sector to cover this area if it's let's say if it's a null uh, between two sectors you can think about adding a sector if there is no site to cover that area then you can think about adding a site another aspect can be that you can um, see if that uh, a user that is uh, in bad coverage can be sent to a lower uh, coverage layer. For instance, if this user over here is having bad throughput and it is on, let's say, um, on 2600 or 3500 or band, which has lower coverage, lower penetration, what you can do is that you can make your mobility strategy somehow that users over here, uh, they go to a lower band, let's say 1800 or 800. In that case, they should have better coverage as well. So uh, these, kind, these kind of things can be done to improve uh, your coverage constraints and you can easily find this out from the drive test log file because you have throughput as well as rsrp in the drive test log file now the next one is uh, is slightly uh, more difficult which is when you have um, interference issues or let's say you have low sinr so um, similarly to rsrp if you plot throughput on y-axis and SINR on your x-axis, you will see that uh, as SINR decreases, the throughput also decreases. So that's that's a common thing that we expect uh, because low SINR will give you low CQI and low CQI will give you a low 
MCS, which will give you a low throughput. So uh, if you remember, I have covered this in my link adaptation uh, chapter. In that session, I covered this in detail, how SNR and throughput and the link adaptation and CQI and MCS, they all come together. So do refer to that if you do not know that. But uh, if you know that, then just we can just continue here as well. So uh, now if you have uh, a low SNR, it can be due to multiple factors. One multi one factor can simply be that you have low RSRP. If you have low RSRP or low coverage, your SINR will also be lower. But another app thing can be that you have high interference. So what you can do is that let's say you have two different clusters. Uh, you have two drive test logs from two different clusters. You can plot the SINR against the RSRP. So over here, for example, we have SINR on the y-axis and we have uh, RSRP on the x-axis. So now what is happening is that uh, cluster number one, which is the blue line here, it shows higher SINR on each RSRP value, while the orange line, which is cluster number two, it is showing a lower SINR against each RSRP index. So what this means is that cluster number two has more interference, or you can say that cluster number two is more interference limited uh, when it comes to uh, your drive test analysis. In that case, what will happen is that cluster number two will have lower CQI, will have lower MCS, will have lower throughput. So if you want to improve your cluster number two, there is room to improve the SINR and make it somewhat equivalent to cluster number one. And in that way, you can increase your throughput. Now, uh, it's not as simple as that. There's possibility that cluster two and cluster one are in different uh, geographical locations. Like for instance, this is uh, cluster number two is in is a very dense city while cluster number one is not that dense or maybe it's more of a, of a suburban area. So in that case, uh, a dense city will usually have more interference. Similarly, it's possible that cluster number two has uh, more traffic or more load. Um, if you have more load that causes more RSSI, that all can also uh, increase your uh, interference. But if that is not the problem and you can see that you still have interference, then it might indicate that you can down tilt certain sites to reduce the noise floor and improve your SINR. So typical physical optimization can help over here or there can be features like uh, lean carrier structures that can also help you in reducing your interference scenarios. So in that case, um, if you improve your SINR, you improve your RS, you improve your throughput as well. Now, uh, let's move to more juicy topics. Uh, how can you estimate congestion or capacity issues using drive test log file? Now, remember that a drive test log file is from the UE side. So it's very difficult to find out uh, whether you, your low throughput is uh, mainly because of uh, congestion on the site or is it, is it because of a capacity limitation or a bandwidth limitation. So uh, one way to estimate that is actually to plot resource block utilization. Um, you can plot it against frames, against slots, against per second, whatever that is. So if you, let's say over here, if I plotted it against slots, for instance, or subframes, so what will happen is that uh, I can see in this scenario that my RB utilization, my resource block utilization is not like consistently higher to higher it is fluctuating a lot you can see peaks at 100 percent but you can also see dips at 10 percent or 0 percent or 20 percent so what this shows is that uh, the e node b or the g node b uh, is not giving me the full resources that are available so what it means is that there is a possibility that there are other users that are camped to the cell that are connected to the cell and they're also downloading for instance they're also active so the g node b or the e node b scheduler is distributing resources between my ue my drive test ue and those users so in that case what will happen is that uh, i will see fluctuation in my resource block utilization if i do it over time well if uh, i look at another example in this case let's say there is no congestion, I can see that uh, more or less my uh, RB utilization is above 80% in most of the cases, from 80 to 100%, that is where it is moving. So in this case, what I can see is that uh, I'd, there's no real congestion on the, on the network. So uh, this one is a healthy, uh, is a healthy scenario where I should have very good throughputs. 
and this one uh, shows uh, a scenario where you have a capacity bottleneck so if you have this kind of chart from your drive test log file from the drive test log file you can find RB utilization and you can plot it over time so if you have this kind of chart that should indicate that you have a capacity bottleneck now how to solve that one simple thing would be to add more sites to add more bandwidth to add more sectors if you have possibility of let's say multi-user MIMO you can add multi-user MIMO that can that can give you a lot of uh, additional gain as well in case of uh, congestion uh, I, if you remember I covered that under my massive MIMO uh, session so uh, if you want to understand how MU MIMO or, or multi-user MIMO helps in this scenario you can refer to that um, another option could be mobility strategy so if for instance you can check that um, your your issue of RB utilization is higher on a particular carrier then that means you lead load balancing or you can use uh, the mobility strategy to shift users to the other carrier which is let's say slightly less loaded so that's another option that you can explore when you have this kind of problem but uh, if you have low throughput and you have uh, you can plot RB utilization against time and you see this problem then you can actually tell your let's say your client or customer that uh, this issue uh, does not look like to be a RAN issue uh, from from the UE side it's more of a site level issue where you have congestion on the sites and you need to relieve the congestion to improve your throughput so that is uh, how you can find out congestion or capacity issues now um, Another one which is which is the let's say most important and the most difficult part to see is when you have um, issue on the backhaul. So let's say you have an issue on the core or the transport network or the backhaul. How can you find that out from the drive test logs? So this is a, um, something that is difficult, but I have um, a very, very, um, you can say a clever trick to estimate that. So before that, uh, let's understand um, how this works. So this is, let's say my site. A node B or G node B and this is the backhaul the core so there is a huge amount of data coming from the core what will happen is that uh, the G node B or the E node B in order to send this data over the air to my user it will send it over all the, the multiple slots so you can see all the slots are scheduled all of them are let's say full right so I have six slots all six are carrying data because I have a lot of data over here and uh, in this scenario all six are carrying data so my frame usage is six slots out of six hundred percent now if another site which has let's say uh, an issue on the backhaul so what will happen is that the amount of data that's coming um, is low so it can be issue on the core side it can be issue on the AMBR on the GBR or or whatever the scenario that a transport network has uh, it can cause low incoming data to the uh, G node B or the E node B. So what will happen because the, the data incoming is low the G node B or the E node B will not fill all the slots. So for instance this data it can be sent over two slots while other four are empty. So in this case the user will have low throughput because there is just less data right but when we check the frame usage we can see that only two frames or two slots are carrying data out of six. So we can say that our frame usage is 2 by 6 which is around around 33 percent right so in this case uh, what will happen is that we can assume that we have an issue on the backhaul now um, how to find that uh, every time the, when there is data on the backhaul the g node b or e node b will schedule a pdcch allocation right so if you have let's say 1000 slots or 1000 subframes in one second uh, and out of those 1000 subframes you can see an PD, a PDCCH allocation on let's say 800 or 900 slots uh, then that means that's a healthy ratio that means that you should not have any issue on the incoming data flow but if you you are using a, a full buffer FTP or UTP download and uh, you are only getting out of 1000 you're only getting PDCCH allocation on only let's say 300 or 400 or even 500 slots that means that the incoming data flow is low so when incoming data flow is low your throughput will be low but that 
scenario might not be related to your uh, RAN or your UE side or radio issues. That is mostly related to uh, your higher level issues, for instance, the core or the backhaul or transport. So that is how we find out. Now, um, people confuse uh, this one uh, with the, the slide that I just showed previously, this one. Now, uh, remember that, that this one is resource block utilization, which is on PDSCH, physical downlink shared channel, the data channel, right? While this one is the uh, PDCCH allocation, which is the physical downlink control channel. So if your PDSCH shows low utilization, that is usually related to congestion or capacity over on the site. But if your PDCCH shows low utilization uh, or it shows low uh, amount of scheduling that is usually related to backhaul or transport or code. So it is it is a, a very fine line but it is a, a very important thing to understand conceptually how to really find out from the drive test log files your, where your problem lies. Now uh, what happens let's say that you have both uh, uh, you have a huge number of data but you also have congestion. So this it will look like something like this. So because I have a huge number of data, the G node B or E node B will try to schedule all the data and will try to schedule in all the slots. But because there is congestion, so what will happen is let's say this one slot is still scheduled, but it is not full. Similarly, these slots are still scheduled, but they are not full. So what will happen is that in all these slots, because they are scheduled, there should be a PDCCH. So a PDCCH allocation should be there in all of these slots, but in this, 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 and this slot, the RB utilization will be low. So this will show me that there is no issue on the backhaul, but there is issue of con there might be an issue of congestion. While if uh, I can see that there is only um, a few slots that are scheduled, while other are empty, that means there is no PDCCH here at all. If there is no PDCCH, then there will be no PDSCH as well. But if there is a PDCCH, there might be a full PDSCH allocation or a, or a small amount of PDSCH allocation. So, uh, uh, so this one over here, it shows me that because not all the slots are allocated, that means that the incoming data that the, the G node B or the E node B is receiving is less in amount. That means that we have a low amount of data and that is what I call a low frame usage. So if let's say if you have Actex, I think in Actex you have this KPI of frame usage and you can use that KPI directly or in other tools, let's say in GenX for instance, you have uh, PDCCH allocations itself. So you can see how many PDCCH grants were available. So out of 1000, if you see 800 or 900 grants per second, so that would mean that you have a very good uh, frame usage. So no issues. Um, in your um, downlink uh, data, no issues in your backhaul. And if you have, uh, let's say, uh, 300 or 500, even 600 PDCCH grants, that might indicate that you have um, low frame usage and you might have an issue on the backhaul. Uh, similarly, um, I'm, I'm talking about 1000 here as an example uh, because most of the low band 5G and LTE they have 1000 uh, slots, 1000 subframes per second. But if you're using, let's say, 5G on a mid band level or uh, where your, your TTI is 0 0.5 millisecond, you can have 2000 slots as well. And they can also vary depending on the, your downlink uplink ratio. So that's just an example. But uh, the the crux of the issue, the um, essence is still similar. The concept is still similar. If you have low PDSCH utilization, you might be facing a capacity or a congestion issue on the site. If you have low PDCCH utilization, uh, your low PDCCH grant count or low frame usage, uh, that might indicate that you have an issue on the higher level or core or, or backhaul or transport. So it's worth investigating that as well. Now, uh, this is from the drive test, the amount of things that we can get. Of course, there are more things that I just wanted to capture the most important ones that I can think of. Um, mostly from drive test, we can't find the radio issues very quickly, but people struggle to find out the capacity bottlenecks or uh, to find out the transport or backhaul uh, bottlenecks or core issues. So uh, that's why I wanted to really show how we can find all of this from the drive test analysis. Now in the next session, we will discuss how all of these issues we can find out from the KPIs as well.
from the RAN or radio KPIs. So stay tuned for that. And uh, after that, we'll cover the Wireshark as well because I've gotten lots and lots of requests for Wireshark as well. So we'll do all of that uh, all in due time. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.